Hi, I'm Jane. And hi, I'm Mark. And welcome to our channel. So as you can see, it wasn't the best start to the week, uh, especially with now being on my own. So I just had to keep myself busy while I waited for uh, some news from the insurance company. Hola, what hard. Right, so this has uh, been today's job. So I cleared all this, well, it was like this, all the pathways, just covered in like years worth of debris and weeds and stuff. So yesterday I've cleared the outdoor kitchen area um, all the way down there so I've now discovered a path near all the outbuildings um, this is going to be the growing area so I plan to plant a few more trees over there um, I'm just going to start off obviously because we're not living here full time just yet <laughs> I say just yet that's my plan um, I'm planning on just maybe doing maybe two two growing beds today but i know i definitely want to get some uh, seed in the ground for flowers ones that are quite hardy i have got some watering devices that um i'm going to put in when i'm not here but this is what i've done today so i've just cleared a little bit of that ground and i've made i've used all that that's going to make i suppose in a few weeks months um, a good base for compost. I'm going to add some more soil to the top and um, my wonderful neighbour is going to bring me some bags of compost because I currently don't have a car. Uh, had a bit of a nightmare in Lisbon taking Mark back to the airport on Saturday I think it was. Oh I don't know. All the days merge into one. So I'm going for um, flower beds around the trees. So I've got one there and two there i've just used up some old blooming um roof tiles that were just in a pile just to make edges eventually um, i'd like to replace them for some nice granite stone but believe it or not we just really don't have much granite stone on this property uh so yeah so the roof tiles will do for now just to kind of demarcate where where the flower beds are going to go so i've been watching many many youtubers um, make do grow amazing things go on on that channel with their growing so I'm kind of um, going for a little bit of what they've done uh, Portugal from scratch love watching um, you growing things and how you've managed to do it uh, Ange of uh, Portugal project project Portugal oh dear there's that many things and then eventually um, I will make some raised beds of all these things I've practiced back in the UK uh, this year. So starting from kind of January onwards, um, I watched Cindy Vine using the plastic bottles, empty plastic bottles of making like mini greenhouses. And I planted all sorts of things in those through the winter. And then when they were ready, transplanted them maybe about March, April. And my garden back at home has like done amazingly well. So, yeah, a few inspiring videos um, and a bit of practice back home. And now I'm going to give it a go in Portugal. I know it's very different, but if you don't try, you'll never know. And you certainly won't learn anything. Um, and that's what it's all about. Every day's a school day. You have to learn. 
So I'm going for, you can see all this kind of strawy kind of material here. So I've got the box from the sofa that we've had delivered. I'm going to split that into two and I'm just going to start until I'm back in October with two uh, small beds. Just preparing them really for, um, for autumn. So I've got a cardboard base, got so much like leaves and twigs and branches. I'm going to put that in next. I'm going to put some of this stroy kind of stuff on top of that. Um, my neighbour is going to bring some compost later, like I said, because um, I have no car currently until it gets fixed. Um, and then I'll probably top it with some more of this straw. That seems to be working well for a lot of people. And then, yeah, let's, let's get planting. So, like I said, flowers in these and two kind of uh, veg beds. And I'm really sorry, my footage is just terrible at the moment, but I'll get there, I'll learn. So that's my pear tree over there. I've got grapes surrounding this kind of growing area. There is a nice granite wall there, but I'm yet to discover that. That's tomorrow's project and clearing a bit more of the pathways around. I've uh, got a couple of olive trees down here and that's a really lovely fig tree. And then these are all our outbuildings. Um, they're in really good shape. They just need sorting out this first one. Well, that's not the first one. This first one, sorry, but about the light is going to be... Um, just like a storage wood, cardboard, all that kind of recycling stuff. This one will turn into a games room. Then we've got uh, another one. Not quite sure what, what we're going to do with that one yet. And then uh, a top one, which at the moment has just got like anything that was half decent off the property. I've kept in there. Uh, my neighbour again, some of you probably know him. Um, I know people have had IBC tanks delivered from him as very kindly lent us a spare one. If we find it useful, We'll obviously paying for that um, considering where I'm going to be growing I think we're going to find that very very useful and then we've got further out building here that eventually could be chickens who knows but I'll just take you quickly down here just to show you try and orientate you that's down at the end of the property we've got um, Thomas which is a 1974 uh, Lily, Lily Hammer, I think it's called, um, Little Bro uh, trailer from, oh, now I'm going to have to think, I'm going to have to get you the details about that, but it's like a little gypsy caravan, it's one of the first camping tent trailer things that was ever kind of built, and yeah, it's, uh, so, hmm. it's quite old, <laughs> let's put it that way, it's nearly 50 years old, so it's a vintage trailer, but it's immaculate, and on another video I'll show you that. And then we've got the dam there, uh, and then yeah, so that that's that's the field, and then this other outbuilding is going to be perfect for chickens. So, got a um, nice outside area, water trough, and a nice little sheltered, nice little sheltered part in there, which is just uh, some black kind of plasticky material that we found we found on the property and thought it might come in useful at some point for something. So, yeah, and pallets, obviously. You cannot go wrong with having pallets because you can use them for everything. And just a very quick show you of the compost area that Mark's quickly made. So we've got um, the composting toilet part. We know we can't touch that for at least a year, maybe two years. I don't know. I'll have to double check on videos. And then uh, food, everyday kind of garden waste is going in there. So, yeah. Uh, that's that's the project so I think I'll put you on um, a time lapse while I try and cut these in half and try and do some kind of assembly with them okay see you soon
Hi everyone, um, just thought I'd do a quick video. Um, so, last couple of days in the village of La Dosa, the ATM's had no cash, which has been a, a bit of a pain because the supermarket doesn't accept, um, what's that on my neck? Paint. Um, the supermarket doesn't accept my bank card, so obviously it's a, a Barclays um, cash card, and won't accept it, so... It's been a bit of a nightmare, just trying to, you know, get the things that I need um, with the cash that I've got. They've also not had any ice for two days, which again has been a bit of a problem, seeing as we're off grid and we've got um, a limited kind of solar setup going at the moment. Um, we've only been here two weeks, so uh, yeah, we've got, you know, to like charge things for um, the lights, even to run like the little mini fridge, but you know, that takes up a lot of power out of the batteries that we've got so yeah so um the um thermal box has been absolutely amazing that um edgar the neighbor lent us um i'll just quickly show you the box i mean it's brilliant <clears throat> but for it to work really well for a couple of days on the trot it needs um oh sorry uh where am i going yeah, so that's, you kind of get the idea, that's, uh, oh, maybe you don't get the idea because I'm absolutely dire with this thing. There, finally. Yeah, so that's the, the thermal box and it's been great. Um, but yeah, because the, um, the supermarkets had no ice, it's been a nightmare trying to just keep things cold, keep, um, keep things fresh and limited cash, keep buying fresh stuff. So anyway... I went to the cash point this morning. One of my lovely neighbours, uh, Joaquin, um, gave me a lift because he saw me with my shopping trolley, um, you know, doing the 1K walk in 38 degree heat. And he gave me a lift, which was really kind of him. Took me to the cash point and yes, there was cash. Fantastic. So I went into the supermarket, got my bits and there was like two or three huge bags of, of ice, just in, in like um, carrier bags. Anyway, the owner and his daughter came over to me. Obviously, I'm not speaking much Portuguese at the moment and were having a conversation with me about this ice. I didn't have a clue what they were talking about, but I thought they were saying, you can't take that ice. So they saw the disappointment on my face. What they were actually trying to tell me is that they'd specially made that ice for me because they knew how much I needed it. Um, yeah, and... Um, they haven't had a delivery so so the guy i'm gonna to have to find out his name is a lovely man um yeah the owner of, of the supermarket had like made me three whole bags um big massive bags and that i've got one bag for the for the next three days now um i could only bring one today because i've only got like a little uh one of those trolley basket things to help me carry everything so yeah i took one of them but on the journey back all my shopping's in the basket and a can of 7-Up has somehow punctured or exploded. And from being elated that I got cash and I got ice, I've now broke my phone. My phone was in the shopping bag with the can of 7-Up and yeah, I currently have no phone. So I think it's got water in it. I mean, the screen had a crack, like a, a crack on it anyway, but it's currently... Um, yeah, I got it out when we got back, wiped the water off, managed to do a very quick video on it, showing you the ice that the supermarket man had made for me. And then after that, it just, it's gone kaput. I've tried uh, putting it in the cool box to cool down. I've tried blowing in it. I've tried um, shaking all the water out of it. I've tried, you know, you name it, I've tried it and it's not working. So the problem is now with no phone, I've got no contact with the outside world. I have got my neighbour Edgar, who I think is coming visiting later to help me fill the plunge pool. So fingers crossed, he um, will have a spare old phone just so I can make contact because I've got the garage um, ringing me like at any point to let me know what the diagnosis is with the camper and how much it's gonna cost, you know, cause we're desperate to have that back by weekend. So yeah, from uh, an elated morning, now gone to a very disappointing uh, afternoon. Mm. 
Anyway, I'll update you on the phone situation later. I'll carry on with uh, the kitchen makeover and uh, I'll show you that later as well. Keep myself busy so I don't think about my phone and everything else. Okay, ciao for now. Okay, so, whew, it's certainly got a lot warmer now. A misty start this morning and very cool. But it's drying uh, the cement, concrete, whatever you want to call it. I know it doesn't look pretty, but it's being covered um, with the AstroTurf stuff. So, it'll look, it'll look fine. It didn't need to look pretty, just needed to cover the great big gaping holes that was in it. Right, I'm gonna take you with me because you need to you need to see this. I think I've showed you the washing machine in a previous video. But today I'm going to use it. Uh, I've been working working down at the pool area where the washing machine is and um, that's where we're gonna put an outdoor bathroom as well. So I'll come back for that in a minute. So let me just show you the amazing washing machine. I've got my washing line all set up. My peg bucket. And the washing machine, look, she's all ready to go. I've stuck a sock in because I need some kind of like a, a plug type thing to uh, block the hole up. But yeah, I've got dirty washing. I've got no car, so I can't go down to... Um, industrial zone or even into our cans to the to the laundrette that we saw the other day so yeah DIY let's do it all right let's get washing so I've got the laundry got the laundry powder got the washing machine 
I've got my sock in for the plug. Washing line's all ready. Just need to go and get uh, some water. One minute. Right, let's see how the sock holds first. Uh, actually, that's a really good fit, it's perfect. Right, let's see, come on sock. It has been cleaned out as well, by the way. Oh, well that's a good do, it's all running to the back. Got any leaks? bad it's like on a bit of a slant so it's not going that way where the sock is <sighs> a bit more I think got a lot of smalls to wash today just ignore me uh, my smalls and mark smalls alright I'll get, I'll get some more water for rinsing after let's just get them washed Now, obviously, this is all very new to me. I have no idea what I'm doing with one of these things. Uh, I think I better get my gloves. One minute. Bean bag that was in the uh, one of the outbuildings that needs a good wash as well. So I'll just shove that over here. And check this brick and marche. I got myself a swing. So I'm going to attempt to put that up if I can't. Um, I'll have to wait for Mark to come next week and he can do it. But there's a perfect like piece of wood just in that tree. It's just saying swing, so there it is. Let me just show you these quickly, because they were all in the wheelbarrow. Buried, burying my gloves. How cute are those? My little geckos, my little lizards. So they're going on the swimming pool. Well, the water tank come swimming pool. Thought that I'd... Uh, just fancy it up a bit once I've painted the outside and the pathway down to the pool and the outdoor bathroom. Got these from Morrison's back in the UK. Brought all sorts of stuff, honest to God. Um, so I'm going to get them out in a few minutes um, when I've done my washing and get them soiled up so at least I can see where I'm going this evening. Right, important thing, I don't want like slimy hands, my gloves. Right, let's get the wash. Well, the water's held in there, so that's good news. It smells nice. I'm not really keen on like lavender washing powder and stuff, but that's not bad. All right. Right, so I stick a bit of that in. I'll shift my fag. Right, uh, I won't go with the big sock just yet. I'll just see how well it goes. And I'm not going to show you my smalls. Socks, not not bothered. Bikinis, full of pool paint. Uh, I'll just keep any kind of decent stuff to one side for now. I don't want to be wrecking it. Them in there, that the other half is the bikini. That definitely needs a wash. Most of this is just like gear that I've been working in. Yeah, they're marks. Smelly socks. Right, that'll do for now. Let's have a go. So I'm presuming the ladies would have. Um, Give them a good, a good wash. I thought I reckon they would have had soap on here and like done all this business. So maybe I need to put a bit of soap on. Oh, let's get the socks up. Let's have a try. Well, they're going to smell nice if nothing else. Oh yeah. I don't know how clean they're going to be, but, oh yeah, I don't know whether that's algae off the top of the bloody, 
washer all the crap off the socks. Smell of lavender. To be fair, it doesn't really matter because all this stuff is, like I say, it's all stuff that we're working in, so it's um, it's not expensive gear. We brought a lot of cheap stuff or just like old stuff from home because we just knew it was going to get wrecked. I mean, when I came in May, my God, I was only here five days, three days working on the farm. And I just thought, we don't need fancy clothes here. A few nice outfits for going out in the evenings, but that's literally about it. And my problem is now I've not got a basket, so I'm going to have to empty all this stuff out. And this will have to be my basket. <laughs> the water's absolutely filthy now and I don't know whether it's the clothes or just like years and years, <laughs> years and years with a crud on the sides. I mean, I have cleaned it, but without, I suppose, a jet wash. Right, stop looking. This is my smalls. Well, not, not so small. Feel free to skip this part of the video. To be fair, these weren't that dirty. Oh, I've got my water for rinsing. Put my sock back in. Got absolutely drenched at the IBC tank. Let's give these clothes a rinse and get them pegged up. Sure, you've watched much more interesting videos, but if you're anything like me, it's real life and I love watching stuff like that. Even somebody just like doing something totally boring because it's real life. And it's showing, you know, people's experiences and I find that far more interesting than sitting watching telly. I don't think I've properly sat and watched telly for about eight years or something. YouTube, that's what got me here. YouTube. A lot of uh, YouTubers out there to blame for it. But I wouldn't have it any other way. That's a good deal as well. I've got my me, uh, me washing lines in full sun. It wasn't intentional. Anybody else really weird like with pegs, coloured pegs? You have to put two matching coloured pegs on, on your items. Or is that just me being weird? <laughs> 